In this video, I'm going to introduce hypothesis testing and then do a few examples showing how to use StatCrunch in Excel to perform hypothesis tests. And for a brief intro to hypothesis testing of a population mean, I'm going to talk about the height of American men. We assume the mean of that population of American men is about 5 foot 10 inches or 70 inches. You always have a null hypothesis when you do a hypothesis test. It always has an equal sign in it. And for this example, we're saying our null hypothesis is that the mean of the population is 70 inches tall. Your alternative hypothesis never has an equal sign. It either has a greater than, a less than, or a not equal to sign. For this example, I'm saying the alternative hypothesis is that the mean height of American men is actually bigger than 70 inches. And as long as some basic assumptions are met as far as the size of the sample and the distribution of the underlying population, we know that when we take samples of American men and we look at the average height of the people in that sample, it's going to follow a normal distribution. So what that means is, for the most part, when we look at a sample, the average height of that sample will probably be pretty close to 70. Now, it is definitely possible to get a sample that has an average height much lower than 70 or an average height much higher than 70. It's just not as likely because most of the distribution is close to the mean. And what we need to do then to conduct our hypothesis test is choose a value for alpha. Here I just chose alpha equals 0.05. And what that means is in the area we're looking for, there's only 5%. So for a greater than, we're looking at numbers bigger than the mean to the right of it. So in the right-hand tail, there's only 5%, and there's 95% of the distribution in the rest of the graph. And in a nutshell, we are going to take our sample, look at the mean of that sample, and if it falls anywhere in this 95%, we're not going to reject our original hypothesis that the mean is 70. But if we get a sample way out here that is very, very unlikely to get, there's only 5% chance that you ever get a sample that has a mean way out here. We're going to say we have enough evidence to assume that the alternative hypothesis is true and that the mean of the population is actually bigger than 70 inches. Now with this whole process we can never say for a fact that our null hypothesis is true because there's no way to really test whether the what the population mean really is. If we get a sample that's somewhere in this 95 percent we just say we do not reject the null hypothesis. We don't know if it's true or not, but we're not going to reject it. If we get a sample that produces a mean way out here in the tail, and it's pretty unlikely, we say we do reject the null hypothesis in favor of the alternative hypothesis. Now there's two types of mistakes that can be made here. One is we get a sample that's way out here, and we say, wow, we need to reject the null hypothesis. That's really unlikely. But these samples do occur sometimes. They, five out of every 100 samples will produce a mean that's out here in the tail. So 5% of the time you're going to make a mistake and you're going to say we should reject the null hypothesis, but in fact the null hypothesis was true. It's just an unusual sample. That's called a type 1 error. A type 2 error is when you take a sample and that mean from the sample falls somewhere in the 95% area. And so you don't reject the null hypothesis. But in reality, you should have because the real population mean actually is bigger than 70. But based off that sample you took, you didn't have enough evidence to reject it. And so I just talked through everything in terms of the normal distribution. But when you're doing a hypothesis test of the population mean, you have to calculate this statistic to measure how far away your sample mean is from your null hypothesis mean. And so this statistic follows the t-distribution, which is similar to everything I just talked about. The t-distribution is centered at zero, but you're still looking for if your sample produced a result, if it produced a test statistic that's way out here in the tail, 
highly unlikely only has a 5% chance of occurring. If it does, reject the null hypothesis. If your sample produced a statistic that was in the 95%, then you don't reject the null hypothesis. And so to go through an example quick in Excel, you have your null and your alternative hypothesis. You gather your sample data, and then you can calculate your test statistic. And so do the formula for the test statistic. It looks better written right there. But type it into Excel or your calculator, and you get that value. And then you need to know your critical value. So ignore this for now. But you need to know the value of alpha. And this is completely made up by the person who is conducting the hypothesis test. They could choose alpha 0.01. They could choose alpha 0.05. Let's talk about 0.05 first. So you need to find that basically you're finding that cutoff value for where there's only 5% left in the right hand tail. So what is that cutoff value? Type in this formula in Excel, t.inv, and we want 0.05 in the tail, and we have 49 degrees of freedom because it's always one less than our sample size. And Excel gives you back the cutoff value for 5% in the left-hand tail. Excel always gives a left hand. But by symmetry, the right-hand tail would be a positive 1.67655. So if that's your cutoff value for the right-hand tail, look at what your test statistic is, 2.11 and 1.67. So if this is 1.67, your cutoff, 2.11 is further out here, which means you're in that 5% of the tail. You're really far away from where you thought you'd be. This tail only happens 5% of the time. So based on this sample you took, you would reject the null hypothesis. Now, if the person conducting the hypothesis test really didn't want to make a mistake of rejecting the null hypothesis when they shouldn't, they may choose an even smaller alpha, 0.01. So now there's just 1% in the tail, and that gives you a critical value of 2.40489. So think about 2.4 compared to this, 2.11. So if this is 2.4, 2.11 is now here in the shaded in red part. So if alpha is 0.01, we would not reject the null hypothesis. Another way to test the null hypothesis is the p-value test. And you start off the same exact way. You need to find your test statistic. But then you find the probability of getting a, this result or something even more unlikely. So to put that into picture, if 2.11 is my test statistic, and I'll make a little line out here where 2.11 could be, we're finding the probability of getting that result or something even less unlikely, even further in the right tail. And so in Excel, you would use t.dist.rt for right tail. And I cell referenced E5 here because that's where my test statistic is. I didn't want to type in the number again. And then your degrees of freedom, one less than the sample size. And so the probability of getting a sample like this is almost 2%, really close to 2%. And so again, you can see your critical value is very important. With 2%, if my alpha is 0.05, I will reject the null hypothesis. If my alpha is 0.01, I will not reject the null hypothesis. Jumping into StackCrunch, it can solve these very, very quickly. So I want to show you how to do these in StatCrunch. For a hypothesis test of a population mean, t-stats, one sample, you'll probably have summary data. Like the example I just did, our sample mean was 72. Sample standard deviation was 6.7. 50 in the sample size. You have to enter your null hypothesis. And then what you're testing, either not equal, less than, or greater than. And then hit compute. It gives you your t statistic, and it also gives you your p value. And you can see those are the same results we got from Excel. It rounded the p value to 0.02.
You can also look up critical values in StatCrunch. Go to calculators, your T calculator here. And so if your degrees of freedom, we had a sample of size 50, so degrees of freedom is 49. And we're trying to find probability being greater than. And if we wanted our alpha to be 0.05, you hit compute and it gives you the, the critical value there for alpha being 0.05. If you change that to 0.01, it gives you the critical value for alpha being 0.01. If you're doing hypothesis testing for a population proportion, do proportion stats. And again, enter in the information from your sample, your alternative, and your null hypothesis. If you're using Excel to do hypothesis testing for a proportion, you'll be using the normal distribution instead of the T distribution. In calculating the test statistic, make sure you use the right formula for that. It's on page 487 of the textbook. And, and back in StatCrunch here, if you're finding the critical values for a, a hypothesis test of the population proportion, you need to make sure you're in your normal calculator. So calculator is normal. And then, let's see, you were doing a greater than test and you wanted this 0.01 in the tails. You can see what your critical value is for 0.01 or for 0.05, etc.